I'll start. Guys, we're here with uh, Shannon Sullivan, the wellness warrior. She's coming to us from helping corporate American women basically transfer their, their bodies. And I want you to kind of tell me a little bit more about who it is you really help. Sure. So uh, we help the modern professional woman because they have not been taught to lose weight in the right way. We've been taught it's all about food, it's all about exercise. So what Meg and I do as part of our company, Enlightened Life, is we help teach that modern professional woman who is juggling so many other things what it really takes and how to put the steps in the right order to enlighten your life and have that body transformation. Now, how did you guys get started in that? Oh, this is a fun story. Um, basically, Meg and I were two CPAs, uh, corporate or certified public accountants working in corporate accounting who were right on that verge of burnout. And we had both experienced different signs, um, dreading work, having that lackluster um, view of what we were doing and how to help our clients. We were living a boring life. So. <laughs> in, in summary, we were two accountants who basically were like, we're not really accountants. You know, we like to think of ourselves as more fun and more energetic. And we definitely value different things than all of our coworkers. So um, we both pretty much hit a wall. Meg went into Pilates. She's a certified Pilates instructor. And I went the integrative nutrition route. So we kind of split off, went and followed our true passions. And then we circled back and caught up with each other and created a company, Whole Food Love, which we're transitioning into our new company, Enlightened Life, um, just to address the real root causes that people have, and women specifically, that we saw in our corporate environment, in our corporate workplace. Mm -hmm. and, th and that wasn't enough for you guys, because I heard you also had to go out and marry a bunch of sailors, too. <laughs> <laughs> we have very similar lives. We both were D1 athletes at the same university in the same sport. What school was that? That was Villanova. Okay. Champs, at least right now, as of right now. Um, we both played D1 lacrosse at different times. We both became CPAs for the same firm. And then, yes, we both <laughs> ended up marrying Navy men. So it's been very, very similar. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more how you've been able to monetize the passion. I mean, part of this um, podcast series is really all about how do people turn their ideas into income? And you guys have been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, so just a little bit of background. We're accountants. We're highly analytical. We struggle with no. perfectionism, which is a, it's, a da, it's a terrible thing. Um, so one of the first way, things that we had to do was be willing to take that risk, to be willing to tell yourself the unknown and the potential in the unknown outweighs the stability and the safety net that we have created for ourselves. And that was financially, um, you know, having insurance, having a steady income, knowing that you're going to be able to pay the rent. So, so letting go of that stability of that safety net allowed us to really jump off and put everything on the line and make it happen. So I, I worked two jobs for a while. I worked full time corporate accounting and then I was building the business on the side. And then I just springboarded right into, okay, let's do this a hundred percent. And Meg was the same way. What was that deciding moment where you guys got together and put your heads together and you're like, we're going to make this into a real business and really grow this and help people. Um, I would say there were two steps. The first step, uh, involves San Diego, sunny San Diego. I know you're such a fan. <laughs> Ron Burgundy, here we come. <laughs> there was something about being there in the energy and all the possibilities. So I actually moved out there. I was going to work remotely in my accounting job and I moved out here there and it was, um, it was very contagious, this idea that anything is possible. So that's what started this first step like, okay, we can totally do this. And then the second one was going to a conference and hearing now someone who has become one of our mentors speak about how to streamline the process. So the first step was letting go like, okay, we're totally in. And then that second pivotal shift 
was then following somebody who had a plan laid out as opposed to bouncing, you know, like a ping pong game back and forth, trying to make traction moving forward. You, you didn't realize you were a spider monkey, did you? No. I mean, there's still definitely a lot of that, but it's, it's much easier when you find someone who's done it before, and then you can kind of bypass the mistakes that you probably would have made because they've already made them and they can help you navigate that. Not to say, Meg and I, it's a learning curve for sure. And we've had our fair share of, of learning, but those are two big steps, yep. For those people that don't know what a spider monkey is, if you ever want to catch a spider monkey, all you do is put a hole in a tree and put a nut in there. And when the spider monkey puts his arm through, he grabs the nut and he can't get his arm out and you won't actually let go. So all you do is walk by and pop him on the head and you can actually take the monkey with you. Wait, right. so I was thinking, what are those? Oh, I'm thinking sea monkey. No, I no, I actually no. don't know what a spider monkey is. So a spider monkey is, a, is an actual monkey that if you oh. grow a hole in a tree big enough to fit its arm in, when it puts its arm in, it grabs onto, the, let's say, the nut, right? And yeah. It get its arm out. Oh, because it won't let go. It won't let go. And oh. you guys are basically in that job. And what was the pivotal point, though, that you finally just let go of that nut, a.k.a. the job, and you were just like, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm done with this. I'm never, I'm never walking back. What was that decision? And what did it actually feel like when you made that transition? Because I, I think one of the things is our listeners want to know is they're listening and they're hearing this and they're on the way into work or they're trying to figure out like, how am I going to, how am I going to let go of that nut myself? So hearing your story and, and just the raw emotions you guys mm -hmm. actually went through to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I, now I get it. Um, one of the, I mean, I can remember walking into my boss's office that morning being like, okay, today is when I'm going to tell him that I'm done, that I'm going to quit. And it wasn't, it was a very slow roll. I had felt like I needed something else for years and years and years. But honestly, one of the biggest reasons um, why I decided to just pull the trigger and turn completely into this is because I found out my older sister was pregnant. So for that, I thought, you know, if I continue working this job, I'm not going to know my nephew because he's going to live on the other side of the country and we're a very tight knit family. So that was first. Second, my younger sister, my baby sister was deployed in Afghanistan and she was a nurse out there. So Navy nurse, I take it. She was a Navy nurse and there had been some issue where the place where she was at, the airfield she was at, had had been penetrated by the wrong side and there was a scare. And so those two things were extremely, were really heavy. One was exciting and then the other one was heavy. And the whole time I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm crunching numbers and my two sisters are having these amazing things happen to them. And at that point I was just like, I need something bigger. I need something I care about in my life. And so that would be, I figured all that out about the day before I decided to walk into my boss's office and just say, I'm done. Actually, there's a silver lining though, because I went in there thinking, okay, I'm telling them I'm moving. They're, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. And they actually extended me and they allowed me to work remotely. So I was like all ready to jump off. And then they were like, oh no, we can be flexible with you. So that was, that was some silver lining, but that was the turning point. That's big. So it took your near death experience possibly for your sister and your other sister having a baby before you're like, all right, I'm cutting the cord and I'm going to jump. Yeah. Let go of that nut. So congratulations. Really acknowledging what's important in life. Absolutely. So if you were going to give like, if you're going to sit down and have a conversation with your younger self, you know, from when you actually started your entrepreneur career to where you're at today, what's some of the golden nuggets you'd actually tell that person? Um, I would say if you have an idea, you need to go for it. So I allowed this idea to kind of gnaw at me and nag at me over years and years and years and years. And I was very much, is it the right thing to do? And I think that's a question that stunted me. So don't ask, is it the right thing to do? Because stability wise, it was not the right thing, the right thing to do, but it's something that I needed to do. And it's something that I wanted to do. So giving myself space, permission, and having the confidence to make that leap was all rooted in this idea. You know, if you have an idea, you need to follow it. You think you would have listened? 
No, I don't actually. How would you get through to yourself back then? Hmm. <laughs> I, okay, here's one thing. Here's one thing that may have worked. I would say maybe by my second or third year, first year, nothing was getting through. Second or third year, hey, Shannon, pick your head up and look around at the managers, at the partners in your firm. Do you want their life? Mm. Do you want to be the person who comes in at eight in the morning and pops a Diet Coke to start their day? Do you want to be that person who someone says, oh, that headshot, was that from five years ago? And your manager said, oh, no, that was last year. But we had a really tough busy season, so I lost all my hair or I'm stressed out or whatever. <laughs> that, I think, was – that, I think – would have penetrated. Hey, look up and look around. Do you want to be any of these people in 10 years? And the answer would have been no, even at that time. Uh, you, you dropped a couple of golden nuggets and I just kind of re rehashed them real quick. So first of all, earlier when you were talking about, first of all, you moved to a new environment, you change your environment, which is so key to being in uh, a positive environment. Uh, number two, you guys got a, a mentor, which you know is huge in business. The faster you get a mentor, the faster you're going to accelerate because you have somebody that keeps you accountable. So those are two, two huge things right there. And just <clears throat> looking around your environment and deciding, is this where I want to be in five, 10 years down the road? And yeah. if the people you're, you're associating with and hang out with, if that's not where you want to be, then go find people that are doing the stuff you actually want to do in life and go see how they got there. And a lot of times I've got some amazing, amazing friends and entrepreneurs, and I've been really, <clears throat> really blessed. Uh, and, and they, they send me pictures today. They're hanging out in Las Vegas and like, we wish you were here, you know? And I'm just like, I wish I was there too, you know? <laughs> and it's just kind of like, it's awesome to have awesome friends that are doing good stuff because it pushes you, uh, to go higher and farther than you would do by yourself. Uh, yeah. so having, having workout partners. I mean, I have a workout partner I like to go to the gym with. Um, if you go to CrossFit community, it's a great example of that. And those are the things that help kind of break in some of those habits that people get in the rut of doing. Um, so what is some of the, um, some of the biggest things I would, I don't look at feedback. I mean, I don't, I don't look at failure in life. I don't even like to say the word, honestly, but I, I look at really failure in a lot of people's eyes is, is a setback. And I look at it as like a learning experience. Um, and there's no, there's no, um, there's no failure. There's only feedback. So if you do something and you, you yeah. learn it and then you actually move on from it, um, what would you say is one of the biggest lessons you've actually learned in your business experience that you wish that you could have learned by watching somebody else make it or that you've actually turned into some kind of success for yourself? So going back to the analytical part of things, we spent our first year so over analytical of what we were doing. It was like we planned to take the first step. And before we did that, well, wait, is, is that the right way? Because if we do that, then we'll come off like this and it's going to be confusing and we want to do this. So we had analysis paralysis, which we talk about, you know, with our clients, but just, it took a lot to get out of that analytical side of things and into connecting to my intuition. Like that's what being an entrepreneur is all about. Hey, I want to do this. No one's ever done it before. It feels like a good idea. And I have all these statistics out there, you know, saying maybe it's not a good idea or not to do it, or there's not a clear path. So it came in line with getting the mentor, but I would say just being too analytical, paralyzing yourself in this idea of, well, I need to step left. No, I need to step right. No, I need to, you know what I mean? Just take one step, fall forward, fail fast. If that makes sense, we, we prevented ourselves from doing that early on because we were so stuck in this mud of, oh my gosh, what's the right way? Which goes back to the thing I said before about the right way to do something. Yeah. There's a, um, something I learned from one of my mentors, uh, Jim Bunch. He's an amazing individual. I love, I love to give credit where credit's due. And he explains it very simply. If you were going to take a, a target, like a, um, like a dartboard, and yeah. the, really people will focus on the outside of the dartboard, you know, like their website or their pamphlets or what their tagline is supposed to be. And though maybe what email thing should I have and yada, yada. And at the middle of this thing, there's someone called a customer <laughs> or, or a client. 
and they they forget to bother asking that person hey what is it that you want you know um, when did you actually start connecting with those clients and asking them what they want so you could actually better serve them how long did that take you guys to figure that out well we've had a lot of shifts in our time together um, we started off tackling disease trying to reverse disease with people and general people and then we started we, we, to we started with something small so <laughs> well we i was gonna say well we actually, <laughs> that's a big one <laughs> well but we started so broad yeah right because we weren't we didn't have that confidence to grab on to this is the niche we want you know corporate women are something that obviously we relate to but it took us years to commit to helping that corporate woman because it was, you know, how do I reverse fatty liver disease and manage diabetes? And then how do I lose weight? And then, okay, the specific person that we want to help with a lifestyle transformation are the people that we relate to the most, specifically professional working corporate women and female entrepreneurs. So pretend for a minute, I'm that corporate woman, it's, it's five o'clock, I'm sitting at the bar, it's Friday, thank God it's Friday kind of day, right? I don't know, but we'll go with it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I, had, I just had the rough work week that I had and my boss is this and this person's that and whatnot and now I've got to go home and probably raise some kids and stuff like that. What, what's going through that woman's mind and, and how do you best connect with that woman to help her? So chances are what's going through that woman's mind is how am I going to get everything done? Because what we tend to do as women is not look at, I have to commute home. You know, I have to fix dinner. I have to play with my kids and then go to bed. You know, that would be, let's say that's the rest of Friday. What women tend to think of is Saturday, I have to go grocery shopping and I have to do this and that. And then Sunday I have to do this and that. And then Monday I have a presentation, Tuesday I have a client meeting. So we overwhelm ourselves thinking 10 steps ahead or 10 days ahead when really all you need to do in that moment on Friday is four things, right? Get home, get dinner, play with your kid, go to bed or whatever that looks like. But we, we snowball, we have this snowball effect where we start thinking 50 steps in the future and then our present self is saying, I'm not going to be able to do it all. I'm not going to be able to do all those 50 steps. And the truth is you can, but you need to take one step at a time and you need to release the view of future, 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 and stay more present in the moment so that you can be more relaxed. You can be more confident in what you can get done. And you're just going to be a happier, lighter person overall. Now, how does that usually work out when you tell them at the bar? <laughs> Well, I have yet to pick up a client in a bar, but you know, there's always a first for, there's always a first for something. Well, Chanda, I mean, we usually, we usually connect with people when they're at that breaking point. Yeah. It's, it's not, they're in this reactive stage as opposed to a preventative stage, unfortunately. Got it. Where's, where's the best place for people to learn more about you guys, connect with you, get more information about, you know, what it is you guys do so you can better serve them. Yeah. So um, we, like I said, we're making a transition from our whole food love company into our newest venture, Enlightened Life. So you can check out that website and the way we spell enlightened is a little bit different. It's, it's L-I-T-E to really showcase lightening up, you know, having an enlightened life. So that's E-N-L-I-T-E-N-E-D life.com. Go there, check us out. Our website is in the process, but you'll be able to find out all, our, all of our information over there. And then we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, but that you'll have to search for whole food love. So you can find us at either place. Okay. And we'll be putting that in the show notes and things of that nature oh, Awesome, as well. And they'll be on the website and stuff. So no worries there. Um, awesome. Is there, is there one thing you'd like to say um, to that woman who's sitting out there right now and she may be sitting at the bar right now and she's thinking about <laughs> these things, you know, if, if you were going to connect with that person, just one piece or a golden nugget or advice you could give her. So she'd be like, man, this is, I need to, I need to pick up the phone. I need to get on the email. I need to, you know, contact, uh, you know, Shannon and Megan to get help with this. What would you mm -hmm. say? 
Well, so what I would say in a nutshell, you can do whatever you want. You can live whatever life you want in whatever body you want, but it has to start with a strong foundation and you have to spend serious time figuring out that foundation. And it can be fun, but that's what we assist people with. And only after you have that strong foundation can you start adding different layers on. If you want to change up your food or change up your movement or um, add some additional uh, workload on, you have to figure out the foundation first. And that's what we help people do. Now, I'm, I don't do much makeup, but it's probably a lot like makeup. You got to lay that foundation first before you put all the rest of that stuff on, right? I guess. Yeah, you're right on. <laughs> Just like that. All right. Yeah. All right, Shannon. Thanks for being with us today. I'll yeah, this to was awesome. Back with you guys a little bit later. Okay. All Bye. right. Thanks.